Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm very glad to be here to present our work, Bad Bluetooth, and uh, my name is Feng Haoxui. Uh, and uh, this work is collaborated with Wen Ridao from Jinan University and the Shandong University, and uh, Jody from uh, UC Irvine, and uh, my colleague Zhong Yi Chen and uh, my supervisor, Ke Wan Zhang, from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. And uh, so, as uh, Bluetooth as a communication technique is adopted, uh, what? Uh, sorry. And uh, Bluetooth as a, te uh, as a communication uh, technique is adopted in uh, many kinds of devices, and uh, which uh, provide rich functionalities. For example, the Bluetooth mouse, Bluetooth keyboard, and Bluetooth handset. And then, uh, however, this kind of uh, open air channel also attract many kinds of attack. And there are more than 200 CVEs reported now, and most of them are implementation vulnerabilities. For example, the uh, low level bugs in the driver. And uh, however, there are also some works show that the Bluetooth device suffers from the privacy leakage problem. And here I want to highlight a related work about the Bluetooth. It's about design problems. They found that the application on the phone can access any uh, paired devices, even the device is a third party device. And so here in our work, uh, here's our uh, one motivated question is uh, how do the users identify the device type, or how do the users know the exact behavior of the device, since the Bluetooth device may provide very powerful ability. So uh, uh, the appearance, obviously the appearance, the display names are totally unreliable, and uh, the, even the pairing process is not helpful for that uh, purpose, so it could be some potential attacks. And then, uh, in our work, we further study the current Bluetooth design and come up with the three attack uh, cases. And uh, then we propose a defense solution and evaluate it on a real uh, Android phone. So let first, uh, let me introduce some background about Bluetooth. The uh, very important uh, concept uh, of Bluetooth is Bluetooth profile, which defines the general functionalities. For example, the headset profile defend the usage and the interface of the headset device. And this table shows the supported profiles on Android. You can see many uh, useful uh, profiles uh, for users. And uh, to establish a Bluetooth connection from, for example, from the phone to the device, and the first day the device will discover the, uh, the, the phone will discover the device. And then uh, they will negotiate a linking through a pairing process. And finally, they will establish a connection. But here I want to point out that the, the connection is profile-centric, which means uh, they can maintain uh, multiple uh, profiles uh, at the same time. So uh, here we will uh, go through the weakness we identified in our research. The first one is about the profile authentication. So we found that it's quite inconsistent uh, of the authentication, especially for the profiles. And so the authentication itself is a device level authentication. And so there are no profiles indication on the pairing process. So you can see these uh, figures, the only uh, paired, only some, uh, uh, only some uh, function names is provided after the pairing. And so if uh, before the pairing, the device can, be pretend, can pretend to be uh, legitimate. And then after the pairing, the uh, device could turn to an uh, evil uh, device. But the, since, the par since the pairing is already finished, so the uh, phone will still trust the device. And uh, from another side, we look into the permission model on the Android phone. We found that the permission uh, model on the Android Bluetooth is quite uh, cost green. Uh, Android using, uh, Androids use Android use uh, two permissions, Bluetooth and the Bluetooth admin, and uh, they are all normal level permission, which means they will get automatically granted if uh, any application uh, requires them. And uh, there, are, there are one dangerous permission, but however, if the application already knows the MAC address of the device, then it doesn't, uh, it, it's not compulsory. So, uh, so we found that the problem founded in uh, previous works uh, is also uh, misaligned with the profile. The misbounding problem is, uh, also exists uh, in terms of the uh, profiles. So uh, 
normally an application on the phone should only allow to establish a connection, connection with the device and uh, to establish an end-to-end communication between the application and the device. However, we found through the same set of permission, the application can initiate a system-level connection using some uh, sensitive profiles, like the human input, uh, uh, human interface uh, device, for example, the Bluetooth keyboard. It's supposed to only uh, be controlled by the system. However, with the TOMO permission, an application can initiate such uh, uh, such connection. Then uh, it can help the uh, application to gain a high privilege without declare any dangerous uh, permissions. So that's uh, that's uh, one of the key ideas of the attack. And uh, even worse, today we found the silent pair. Uh, we found the pairing process could be silent, could be totally silent. And uh, so if we maintain the device has no uh, neither dis display nor uh, input ability, we found the application can require the pairing uh, still silly. And uh, also the dis display name and the, the UI can be uh, uh, cheating to mislead the user, just modify some uh, field of the uh, broadcast information. And uh, so uh, then we come up with the uh, new attack named the bad Bluetooth and uh, the reversal model. We require both the malicious device with the uh, concluded app. And uh, so I will explain the workflow. Uh, first, the, um, the application on the phone could uh, find some suitable times by detecting the phone status. And then uh, if the device is not paired yet, it can uh, require the pairing uh, still silly. And uh, then the Bluetooth could change his profiles to be a malicious one. And uh, then, with the help of the application, they will establish the connection with the phone. And, and launch attacks. Finally, they can uh, destroy the evidence. For example, they can uh, unpair the device, unpair with the device, or uh, disconnect with the device. And we uh, implement our attack on uh, using Google Pixel 2 with Android version 8. And uh, we simulate the device using uh, Raspberry Bar Pi running uh, Linux. And here I will show uh, the concrete attack cases. First one, uh, I think, is the most dangerous one. And uh, if we change the profiles to be the human interface device, uh, HID device, we can inject a uh, global input sequence equivalent to any user uh, actions. And uh, fortunately, Android uh, support a full functional uh, keyboard and the mouse. Uh, on the uh, system, and uh, so in our attack, we also found some uh, test strategies. Uh, for example, we found there exists several uh, functional key which can help our attack, and uh, we can utilize such uh, special keys to directly uh, return to the home to select the items on the phone screen, or uh, open the browser, open the mail uh, application, and however, Sorry. However, if we only have the input ability, it's not that quite powerful. So we investigated the, uh, all the functional key. We found that there is the one key named key system request, which will capture any view on the phone. It's a global screenshot. And then we can uh, send, send a screenshot out to steal the sensitive information. And uh, all the, we, we have malicious app, and the application can just read the screenshot and delete it uh, for the, uh, destroy the evidence. So, uh, and uh, be besides the information stealing, we can uh, inject arbitrary uh, commands to any uh, third party apps, and we can uh, modify the critical system settings, so we can grant uh, dangerous, all the dangerous permissions for us, and uh, we can even shut down or restart uh, the phone. And, uh, if the time is allowed, I will show a quick demo uh, later. So let's move into the second attack case. So if we maintain the device as the, uh, using the personal area networking. So the first example, we maintain our device to be a network set point. And then uh, the device, we can force all the traffic to go through our device. Then we can easily launch a man in the middle attack, which could sniff all the traffic and spoof the traffic 
uh, with malicious uh, content. And uh, a bonus attack here is we found we can also force the device to consume the victim phone's network results uh, under the uh, under this uh, kind of profile. And the last one uh, is we maintain the uh, device to uh, act as a uh, headset device. And then we are able to hijack all the incoming calls and uh, initiate arbitrary outgoing calls. And uh, if the device, if the phone supports a uh, voice assistant, we can trigger the voice assistant and inject any uh, voice command as well. So here, uh, I think the time is still enough, so let me show a quick demo. Sorry, from here. So we can see the uh, application or application requires no dangerous permission. And uh, so now the Bluetooth is closed. And if we open the Bluetooth, we can see a device like a phone. And uh, there's not, they are not paired right now. And we close the Bluetooth and running, uh, run our application in the background and wait for the pairing and the connection. Okay, after the connection, we can control the phone just using our uh, device. We can just uh, select any application and uh, capture a view of the uh, some sensitive information and uh, modify the system settings as well. So by, by using the uh, functional keys, we can even uh, do the attack without using the mouse, which will be more uh, quick and uh, stealthy. So we can uh, control the permission of any applications and uh, first stop or install any applications as well. And we can even shut down or restart the phone uh, finally. And uh, another example uh, demo is for the uh, man in the middle attack. So we access the Apple website, and we also check the status of Bluetooth, and run the application in the background. And now the application should uh, should sniff all the traffic in the background. So if we check the website again, so we can get a malicious page which shows a uh, uh, feasible of our uh, feasibility of our attack. And uh, and. Uh, Lastly, we propose a defined solution on Android phone and uh, evaluate uh, on uh, Google Pixel. And so the core idea of our defense is to provide a fine green control and a better visibility to the users. So, uh, so we will mediate all the parent requests and uh, to promote a, a dialogue for the user to select the authorized profile. And then we generate a bounding policy in a secure storage and then mediate all the uh, further connection and to uh, enforce the uh, policy checking. So we implement our, all the models into, uh, in the uh, Bluetooth system process, since all the connection and pairing will uh, go through this process. And uh, through our evaluation, we found that it's effective to stop all the uh, bad Bluetooth attack and provide a better visibility to the users. Send so that no uh, seducing pairing could happen. And uh, for the performance, we found that uh, 
uh, our uh, defense solution only introduced less than 12% with the total uh, collection time. And to summary, we identify several uh, new design weakness on Bluetooth design, especially on the Android. And we then present our uh, bad Bluetooth attack and uh, with three concrete cases. And finally, we uh, propose a uh, fine grid control uh, on uh, Android. So uh, thank you. We have plenty of time for questions. So maybe I'll start with one. Uh, so I didn't quite catch how the silent pairing worked. Yeah. Um, basically, there are several APIs on the Android phone, and we found that uh, normally, for example, with a normal uh, uh, device which has a display ability, and if we call this, invoke this uh, create a bond, which will initiate the pairing process with the device, then it will pro, uh, will show a dialog for user to confirm. Uh, uh, to, for example, to compare the uh, numbers between uh, the uh, between the phone and the device. But however, if the device has has neither display or uh, nor the input uh, ability, we just call the API once, and then the pairing could be done. So, so I think, uh, but uh, I think in uh, previous work, uh, they already uh, investigate such uh, issues, but however, they rely on two uh, APIs. And uh, one of the API is already uh, protected by Google uh, Android now. And uh, but if we, we found that if we can maintain the device, we can also still do the uh, silent pairing. Okay, so it's an API issue. Yeah. Okay. All right. Another question. Hi, um, Gulis Tunjai from University of Illinois. Um, I think you said somewhere that you used, uh, you utilized the reflection APIs to build the attacks. And as far as I know, starting with Android P and uh, Google is bringing some restrictions to the reflection API. So I was wondering if these attacks would still keep working. Um, so now uh, in the latest version, I think Android 9, they propose some uh, solution about the hidden uh, API. But so I think, uh, so I, 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 uh, um, I'm not sure there exists some legitimate usage of such uh, pairing and the connection API, but currently they are still uh, available. So, okay. so I believe this may uh, further uh, investigation. Thank you. Okay. I guess let's thank the speaker again.